Hello, my name is Pixelated Twix and welcome to my channel. <coughs> Wait a minute. My name is Twix. Pixelated Twix. And I have a story to tell. A case to solve. It was another quiet night at the base. Nothing in the horn. No messages. Just me and the chickens. I guess you could say we were cooped up. As I was saying, I crawled out of the hole I temporarily called my home when I stumbled onto something big. Do you believe in signs? Because this one's a doozy. Murder. Chicago overcoat. Cement block shoes and Lake Michigan. No name. No number. No address. Just... Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Who is this from? Why so anonymous? Who is setting them up? And why do they leave it right in front of my door where I could have hurt myself? Everyone knows I have no equilibrium and my depth of perception is always off before my first cup of coffee in the morning. Woosa. <sighs> With no clues as to who the patsy was that might have left me their calling card, I decided to head downtown to check things out. I had a gut feeling or my stomach was growling because breakfast. With my pocket axe in hand, I decided to take the alley, maybe run around and rummage a bit through there, see what I could stumble across. There was nothing out of the ordinary. The usual hellfires, random chess, graffiti tags by none other than the notorious game called the Mythic Exiles. The everyday monotony, of course. This was going to be a boring walk, but I'm prepared for it. Wait a minute, what's this button? What is this? I couldn't figure it out. I heard something. I had to check it out. This wasn't here before. At least I never noticed it. Let me try this again. Push the button. Run. Oh. Okay, that didn't work. Push the button again. Run in. <gasps> what is this room? Interesting. This looks ominous. I go and look around a little bit. Check out the graffiti tags on the wall. There's a to-do list. Is this a to-do list for murder? Hmm. Well, I had to get out of here. Let's try that again. I have to get out of here. Stomach growling. I stopped at this little Italian joint to check in with Big Lou, who did a bit in the big house and was an ex-button man for the mafia. But when I walked in, the place was as empty as a brothel on Sunday morning. Strange. Not even Sal was behind the counter, busily avoiding work. I decided to head to Merchant's Row instead. I knew a dame called Pen Pen that would sell me a bean shooter, and I had a feeling I was going to need more heat. Merchant's Row was in an uproar, and Pen Pen's shop was surrounded by coppers. And it had been roped off. After a few attempts trying to get over the rope and under the rope, I managed to sneak in to see if my friend was alive and kicking. The place was chaos. Bodies everywhere. I was not expecting to see random merchants taking the big sleep. Knives and pumpkin heads. There was, well, the red stuff. The gooey red stuff everywhere. And worst of all, a single piece of iron that was once Frank the Tank. 
so it was Pen Pen. She was the one that left me the note. I needed to head to the big house to talk to Pen Pen's ex-boyfriend, Tiny Tem. He may be behind the eight ball, but he was still a big shot and nothing happened at Merchant's Row without him knowing it. I made it my business to question one of the detectives on the scene. He was babbling something about missing evidence and that he'd only been gone for a few minutes. I had no time to waste. I needed to speak to Tiny. I hated going to the APJDC LMNOP. The convicts made me nervous. You see, I'd help put some of them in the slammer. They weren't happy to see me either. The rookie at the front desk, he buzzed me in. When I walked in, he tried to slide me a piece of paper. I looked at him, he looked at me. I looked at him looking at me. I think he was trying to tell me something, but well, sometimes I can be oblivious, even as a detective. Tiny was sitting alone. I got the feeling he'd already knew that I was coming to see him. Tim, good to see you. I snatched the bowl out of his hand. He didn't answer. He kept chewing what was in his mouth. I wasn't going to let him see me sweat, but he looked at me with those cold, vacant brown eyes, and I gave him his bowl back. Know anything about what's going on at Merchant's Row? Still silence. I have no patience. Tony. That's all he had to say. Tony the Tickler. <laughs> he was a permanent resident in solitary confinement for a very good reason. I was more than nervous. I was terrified. I'm super ticklish. Tony was just as happy to see me as I was him. The growling and the snarling was my first clue. I ignored him long enough to read through his dossier. Tony couldn't possibly have done this. The timetable didn't fit. Hmm. Pen pens, merchants row, Frank the tank. I need answers. I need answers, Tony. Or you'll spend two lifetimes in solitude. <sighs> Tesma? Sass? <sighs> Who are they? <sighs> I wasn't fluid in Zomini's. Tony was no longer good to me. I left the APJDC more confused than ever. Where is Pen Pen? Where is the evidence missing from the crime scene? Why was Frank the Tank a target and was the merchant just collateral damage? Why was the little Italian restaurant I frequented empty? And who the heck is Tesma? <laughs>